How exciting is it when your products all arrive, you gather it on the nail table, get ready to do the nails, you follow the instructions, and you've seen the video, you start doing it, and it just doesn't work. Frustrating, right? I've been there. I understand what you're talking about. Today, I wanna to talk about the five most common things that can frustrate you when you're working with your hybrid gels. I'm gonna also show you the ways to avoid it, to make it better. It's all in the details, guys. Let's get started. Okay, before I get started with the first one, I just wanna let you know, many people have asked me about hybrid gel. Some refer to it as polygel. I just wanted to clarify that's actually a brand, but it's actually called hybrid gel when we're talking about this particular system. A common frustration is flooding. The trouble comes in if we go like this and we now flood. See that flooding? That's what we don't want. It doesn't matter if you're using alcohol or especially if you're using monomer, you don't want to flood for a couple of reasons. Any runoff of that alcohol that's on top of the hybrid gel, it's running off into the cuticle, can have some of the hybrid gel in your alcohol going in, flooding into the cuticle. So you're sort of getting it on your skin, you might say. You don't want to do that all the time. Now it'll start to evaporate, which is good. But all that running around there, if you're going to cure it and then putting more hybrid gel on top of it, you may be trapping even getting some alcohol in there, stuck in there if you're doing it too quickly. And that would be bad because then the product would really never get a chance to fully cure. Okay. So that's one huge thing. And you can see I flooded it like crazy, but it's starting to evaporate. So I'm just going to work with it. I let it evaporate. It took the time and just let it evaporate. I also noticed lots of comments about whether it's 70% or 99% or 90 of alcohol, and I find 70 is very effective. You don't need to have the 90, although you can use it, but 70 is quite effective. See, so I'm still able to mold this and push it around, but it's not flooding, it's not overly wet. And that's what you don't want. You don't want that to be running everywhere, okay? So that's looking pretty good. It's getting to get a little sticky, so I might need a little bit more alcohol. Don't use nail polish remover. Mm -mm, that won't work either. There's too much oils in there, sometimes lanolins, and that's for our skin, and that would interfere with this. You really want 70 to 99% isopropyl alcohol. Another issue is grabbing too much at one time. We see this with acrylic. One ball method is not an advantage for hypergel at all. Okay, so I've got a pretty good size, and that'd be how much we might want to use for this nail, although I didn't put a form on it. Okay, so we, <laughs> I always forget my brush is dual-ended like that, right? Okay, so we got this one ball, and this is a lot to contend with. You've got a lot on there. Now, I'm assuming most people who are purchasing a hybrid gel product is generally not an acrylic or a hard gel artist. Those require a lot of skill and a lot of time to be dedicated to. So most likely, if you're trained in that, you are probably doing that mostly. These products are meant more for uh, making it a little bit easier. You still have to learn some skill. So it's easier to sculpt like acrylic and like gel, it doesn't harden as you work with it until you put it in the light. And being that you can take your time you can spend a lot of time, you gotta hit every area. The cuticle, the sidewalls, the apex, and the free edge. All of that has to be paid attention to, but you don't have to do it in one bead. It's not that you can't, but I don't wanna make it feel like you have to. So what you wanna do, I'm gonna show you how to do it in smaller beads and how acceptable that is. And a little bit easier it is to manage. Also too, when you're first learning, Understanding those sections, I wouldn't recommend doing a one bead method with acrylic or hard gel either. Not unless you have great experience. It's great if you want to get there. If When you do get there, it's great. But I wouldn't start there. So here's a little bead right here. That's a very little guy. That's very manageable. I'm going to get my brush wet here with some alcohol. And I'm going to take that bead. I say that's my cuticle bead. I'm going to walk it down you need very, very little at the cuticle. You want it to be quite flush. So it's good to learn to work this bead first. See that? I'm just really working it around the cuticle, making sure I have my cuticle separation there. 
that's crucially important when you're doing nails, any kind of nail, is having cuticle separation there. And that means you have a separation between your cuticle and the product. They don't meet. The cuticle and the product does not meet. I'm still working on that first dip of alcohol that I had there, right? I'm getting that nice and flush. I'm very, very happy with that. So I'm going to bring this right down to the sidewalls here, but it's very, very flush. I've still got sidewall separation, right? So I'm really focusing on making sure that I'm going to be doing this right. It's getting a little bit sticky. See how it's not quite as smooth for me? I'm going to get a little bit more alcohol, just a little bit on the end of my brush. And even if I find it's too much, I can even dip on the towel a little bit to release a little. And then I'm going to go in and smooth that guy out. Look how nice that is. Really nice. Another huge advantage of doing in smaller bits like that, you can cure one uh, each bead in between, especially if you're using a deeper color, which I'll get into. Okay, so we are going to smooth that bead right out. Now you can nuke that if you like, or you can gather another bead. We did pretty good at the cuticle and the side walls. And then we can release another bead, get some alcohol. We are going to focus this bead now working on the apex and the free edge because this is a shorter nail. If this was a longer nail and we extend it with a nail form, we could do six or seven beads if you like. I'm not saying you can't do one bead, I'm just saying it's totally okay to do as many smaller beads as you like and that goes for acrylic and gel as well. I just didn't want you to be intimidated by feeling like you have to use one giant bead. Okay, so just take it one bead at a time on each nail. Doesn't matter if you do it in one or 15. Another frustration is lifting. Okay, so something also very important to note, and this really applies for everything or all products, is prepping that nail to avoid lifting. We can get lifting with all the products that we apply, but with hybrid gel in particular, it's really important as it is with others too, to use the base coat that the company recommends before you put your hybrid gel on. And the reason why that's important is because most often they're meant to be working together. They're made to go together. So if you are finding your lifting, just think to yourself, what base coat did you use? Did you use a base coat? And if you didn't, that might be it right there. And if you did, did you use the one that works or that they recommend to work with the product that you have purchased? So the best way to use that is too, there's also can be a special way to use it. Uh, when you are preparing any nail, you wanna make sure that all the organic material is pushed back and removed. So your cuticle is gently pushed back and then your file is removing any type of natural organic material that's right in there. And you want to get into every little corner and crevice of that nail. Okay, so I've done that with that. Remove the dust. And then when you apply the base coat that's recommended to go with the product, mine in particular, you don't just swipe it on like that. You kind of burnish it on. You make sure it's kind of massaged in and getting into every little corner, okay? Doesn't mean to put a ton on. It just means to massage it in to make sure it's saturating into every little crevice. This product is meant to grab onto that stuff. They're meant to like Velcro together kind of thing, okay? Just wanna massage it in every little corner of that nail. If you don't get it on that little corner and you put your product on, that will be the corner that will be lifting, okay? Then you want to cure it for 60 seconds. Mine in particular, you cure it for 60 seconds, but check the instructions because it's all in the details. Every single one of these steps we all get wrong at some point. And then when we revisit it, I mean, we could get frustrated and just push it away and go, nope, it's not, not working for me, or I don't like that product. Almost always, it's us and our technique. It's almost always never the product. 
So that's why I'm just giving you the little details. So get it out of the cupboard if you pushed it away. Bring it back out again. Bring it out of the box and try it again because little details can make a difference between loving it or hating it. Okay. Okay, this is a huge one, is making your layers too thick and it won't cure. And the end result of that is they're flexible, they break off, they peel off. You could just easily take them off. That's not supposed to happen. <laughs> I've done this. When, you know, Hypergel first came on the scene, I got some of it and I was playing with it and it was a white, I believe, I was working with. And when I took it out of the light, it was, I took off the form, I think, and it was all gushy and smushy, Right? So I've done that. I've been there. I know what you guys are talking about. So when you get a color, when you're working with a see-through-ish hybrid gel, the light can go right through it. That goes for when you're working with gel polish or even hard gels. When it's clear, the light can go right through it and cure it. But when there's any little bit of color in it, it makes it harder to cure, right? So what we want to do with that is go as thin as we possibly can. I've got white and black here and they are very high pigment. Even though white is white, it's still a high pigmented color. Mine is a soft white, so it will cure better than the black because black, if you've got a really good black, it's going to be really solid. So even when I was trying to create these and figuring out what colors that I want, black is kind of like, you're going to do black? That's kind of scary, kind of sketchy. And it is if you don't understand it. It can throw you right off and you want to put it on the shelf and be mad, right? And I totally get that. But if you make it quite thin, I mean thin, it'll be huge to your advantage. And oh, do they look good when you get it right. That's what all this is. Once you get it right, it's just so much fun and so satisfying. So here's our white. Now, I wouldn't normally do this right on the base here without doing a pink down first, because if I'm going to file the white off later, it's going to be a little harder. But this is how thin you want to go, and I'll have to demonstrate with the black as well. So when you're using any red or green or a pink or purple, any color that is not translucent, we want to make it relatively thin. Oh, I need, did I get alcohol on there? Didn't even get any on there. <laughs> So we're going to make it nice and thin. See, that started off as a much whiter blob. And now I am thinning it out, which is good. I want it to thin near the cuticle anyway. But you know how you make it quite thick near the apex? You want it to get thicker, right? When you are working with hybrid gel, you must make it thin. Whereas acrylic, you can make it thinner, thicker. It will cure all the way through. But with hybrid gel, you're going to make it thicker as it's supposed to be, but you're going to do it in layers. So I am going to extend this white layer right out. Let's get another blob on there. You can see the difference in the color, right? How much thicker it is. This is quite a bit thinner right near here. As I'm thinning it out, you can see the translucentness of the color coming out. It's kind of a wonky shape. I'm not really paying attention to that now, am I? <laughs> so I'm gonna play around and shape this to get it exactly where I want it. And I'm gonna make it nice and thin. And the reason I'm going to do that is on my first layer in particular, so I can cure it and it will be a solid cure before I put any other color on. You can do this with the black too, just as long as you do it thin. And remember, this doesn't just pertain to black. This pertains to solid whites, a solid pink, any solid color, any color that's rather opaque, this is going to pertain to because you do want it to be a solid, hard cure. Okay, so once you get it to where you want it, nice and thin, then go ahead and nuke it. Now the advantage of doing it super thin is once you get the first layer down, you can pull your form off once you have cured it. Check and make sure that it's cured. Once you've done that, now you've got some light that can go through both sides because you don't have a form underneath anymore, right? So what you can do now is get whatever color. You can go with the white some more because it's highly pigmented as well. 
but I'm going to use the black just to show you the difference. I put my black on, get my alcohol, and I can start spreading my black around. So I'm sort of using, you can use a pink or clear or whatever you've got there. You can use whatever color you want that doesn't have a super high pigment. Or if it does, you just use it really, really, really thin. If you've got a clear, you could use that too underneath and then use it as your base and then put your high pigment color on top. All it does is it just ensures that you don't do a thick pigmented layer all at once. You want to do it in layers. I could have built both layers with black, but I wanted to show the white underneath so you can see the depth of each layer. Now, if I did the white super thick, you would also have trouble with curing. It's the thickness, and especially if you have a pigmented color. The wonderful thing is with hybrid gels, when you're working with it, if you don't like it or you find that it is not working for you and you don't like it, unlike acrylic is hardened on there and it's done. You have to file it off. But when you're working with hybrid gel, if you decide you don't like it, you literally can just scrape it off. I wouldn't necessarily put it back inside there. <laughs> but you can literally scrape it off if you just don't like that design. Okay. So let's say we don't. I'm going to take that right off of there. And I'm just going to cure the black. Let's say we're going to wipe the black off. I mean, we can leave a little bit on there, but I'll just... <laughs> I'm just trying to show you how thick thin, you can make it and still be effectively quite black. It's absolutely beautiful when you get it on. I don't like it fading there. I'm going to have a dark line there instead. Okay, just for the curing purpose, I'm just going to cure this and then I'm going to show you how hard it is. You don't want it to be flexible. You don't want it to peel. You don't want it to be soft. Okay, so I've cured those up. And now I'm just removing the sticky layer. Now this is long. This has got no apex on it whatsoever. It's got no style whatsoever. This is not a design. <laughs> but it's just got the first, I'm just showing you the first layer. Maybe I'll turn it this way. I don't know if you can see. The first layer is the white, and that is literally paper thin. And you can see the black being the second layer, and that is also extremely thin. That's how thin you want it to be when you're laying down heavy pigmented colors. You want them to cure. And then I'll just bend a little, and you can see the black layer on there. It's almost as thin, right? But this nail is long. There is absolutely no apex, no design whatsoever. So this is, you got it cured. And what we want to do now is add the apex onto it and you start getting your design and what you want to do there. But once you add the apex, now you're going to have the strength and you want to keep building that to get the thickness and the apex that you want before the nail is complete. And you can have your solid colors in there that are cured right through. So to recap, hybrid gel is thinner layers, more thinner layers, especially when you're working with pigments. Lamps. Oh, that can be confusing, can't it? I've been in this business for over 30 years and I still find this part of it confusing. Even Caraman said, how come they don't standardize it or make it so it's easy to understand? That's a good question. <laughs> I, you know, I'm not a chemist and I certainly don't want to take the time to go learn all that stuff. I want to do nails. I want to create nails. So I have always just had the policy that I purchased the lamp that I know that the manufacturer that I'm purchasing from, the product that I'm buying from, recommends that lamp to go with their product. That's the easiest way for me to understand that at least I know I'm using the right light that they recommend. Not to say that I haven't used other lights. In fact, I have many times and I found it worked. 
So what I'm learning is, is that keep curing it until it cures for you at the hardness that you're looking for. If you have any questions, you can ask the company that you're working with what lamps do work. The only reason why they may not have the answer solidly for that is they haven't tested every light that's out there with their product. They usually test one, well, several, but they sell one light that they know for the time allowed that they tell you cures their product. And that's what I did. I got one light that I talked to a scientist about it, and I know that this light cures this product. I don't know about that company and that company. You can try it, but that's what I've learned about lights. So it is confusing. So for me, how I clarified is I just use the light that they recommend that goes with the product. Then I know for sure that it will work. I hope that helps you understand hybrid gel a little bit easier. And remember, don't get frustrated. It's all in the details. If you want to see me build a couple of beautiful sets, check these hybrid gel videos out. Bye.